Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be talking about using libraries and modules. This is a bit disconnected from all of the strings that we were talking about, but I do need to talk about libraries and modules because you will be using them a lot in the future. And without modules, you will never be able to unlock the full potential of any language. Now, what are libraries and modules? We'll be taking a look at that right now. Okay. So libraries and modules are interchangeable. So I'm just going to call them libraries for now. And you can actually think of like a Python library as a bookshelf. Okay. And this bookshelf also has a category, right? For example, that bookshelf might be all about marine biology. That bookshelf might be all about fiction or about, you know, mythology. You know, as a kid, I'd like to always, you know, go around the library and, you know, there's this Dewey Decimal System and each bookshelf has like a different, you know, section. So I'd like to see uh, what all the sections were. And so these bookshelves each, of course, have books related to different subjects within its category. For example, this bookshelf of marine biology probably has books on whales, dolphins, sharks, and a lot of other books, right? If you take that example and if you look at Python libraries, you can think of them as extensions of Python. So Python has its basic functions, um, its basic, you know, variables, it has its own functionality, but we can add more functions by importing them from, you know, Python's own library. So we're only getting the Python basic bookshelf, right? Which has, you know, the input function, which can just input the print function, we can have a lot more libraries that we can use, right? For example, I'll go over some of them. Time. The time bookshelf, or in this case, the correct terminology would be library, has two functions, or it has more than two functions, of course, but the two functions we're going to look at is ask time, which gives you the formatted version of the date. Like it'll tell you what the day is, the day of the week, I'll tell you the time and all of that, right? All of that data, once you call the ask time function. And then the sleep function, uh, which will basically pause your program from running. And you might be wondering why is that useful? I'll show you in this video. Now the random module is probably the most helpful out of the three you can see here because generating random numbers is something that you'll do later on in life, like a lot when you're programming especially when you're making game because random numbers are everything. And then the choice function, I won't talk about right now, but it's also very helpful. Maybe if you have some knowledge in Python, you might know what this is. And if you do, I highly recommend you use this in your games. It's a very helpful tool. And then finally, string library. Now we're finally getting back to strings. It has a few helpful functions. ASCII lower will actually give you a string with all the lowercase letters, uh, which can be useful later on. Not exactly now, but I just wanted to show you that functionality. And the format function is something we talked about last video, but guess what? In some of the newest versions of Python, they actually moved the dot format function to the basic Python library. So now the string library, you don't have to use the string libraries version, but I just want to point out that before Python 3.6, I think, or 3.5, you had to use the string library to use the format function. And so extending your reach with all of these bookshelves, having more bookshelves to use tools from, can be really helpful, especially in the future when you use much more powerful libraries. These are like very small ones, right? You might have bookshelves like 10 or 50 times the size of these small bookshelves. So let's get into the code and see what we can do with each of these small libraries. Okay, so we're at the code right now. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to first teach you how to import libraries, okay? So remember that you're working with the Python default library where you can print things out. You know, the print function is within the default library. The input function is within the default library and therefore you don't have to import anything. But the time random and string libraries, you have to import it because you have to say, okay, I'm going to be using this bookshelf as well. You have to declare it so that Python can, during compiling time, actually access these libraries and, you know, use their code you'll kind of get a sense as to exactly what libraries are like way later in our Python extensions unit, where we talk more about classes and what, you know, object oriented programming is. Uh, but that's way later for now. Just know that there's libraries already made for you. And all you have to do is import them. So right now we're just going to do import time. 
right? Import random and import string. Now here's one thing. You have to make sure that you import these at the very top before you use their functionality, right? Of course you can you can like use like you can say import time and then right here you can say like import random and then right here you can say import string. But the thing is it's standard convention just like you don't name variables in uppercase. Um, it's standard convention to put all of your imports at the top, right? Because that's kind of declaring what you're using at the very top and then wherever you use them, you know, whatever, right? It's just that like when another programmer comes to look at your code, they're like, oh, you're using these libraries, I see. And that's why it's just standard convention to put your imports at the top. Now we're going to check out some of the functionalities here, okay? The first functionality is the time library, okay? And now we're going to do print time dot ask time right and you have to do time dot ask time because it's basically saying from the like if you re read this in english from the time library call the ask time function and if we run this it should give us the exact date and as you can see it is new years and we are finally away from this wretched year and hopefully this year will be much better for you guys uh, in terms of your programming life as well as your personal life. So good luck to you all. It's 2021. We're up. Um, but yeah, that's how you do time that ask time. And now you can do another cool thing. Okay. You can actually pause your Python running, right? And you might be wondering why that's useful. Well, later on when you're making your own story your own text adventure game where you know you make you have like a player and they can choose which direction they want to go to in order to beat the game let's take a look at this right let's say you have a very long dialogue right where you're like hello knight welcome to sardinia i don't know i'm coming up with random names and then you want to you know say Say, say more things like print more text, print a lot more text, right? Because you're giving a whole backstory. Okay, wait, wait, actually. Okay, so we have a nice little backstory, and if we were to run this, it would just print it all out. Now, that just doesn't feel really appealing. You want it to sound more like, you know, you're actually interacting with the game. And of course, you can use input to do that, but wouldn't it be cool if you could print out a line and then wait for the user of to, like, for them to read it, like maybe wait a few seconds, and then print out the next line? That's what time.sleep does. So you can do time.sleep and then you write out the number of seconds you want to sleep. I'm just going to say one, right, for each of these. Uh, and then right here, I'm, I'm going to put like a time.sleep2 and you can vary this, right? Just just to have that effect of like, you don't want to, ridiculous, uh, and etc. Um, and then so right here, as you can see, we have a few time.sleeps between each print function. Now let's run this and you'll see the difference, definitely. Welcome, young hero. That that's still a bit fast. Maybe maybe two seconds. But you get that you get the gist of what I'm trying to say here. If you were to run this now, it should. Yeah, this is this is much better. Yeah. So it's kind of reading like a story, right? You, you have time to process the information as the lines come one by one. It's a lot more, you know, intensive. You feel more immersed. I mean, it's just text, of course, but it's a lot better presented this way rather than a huge blob of text printed out at once. That's what time.sleep does. And you can use it for a lot of other things too. Like if you want to like pause the execution of your program, you can use time.sleep, right? Now I'm just going to comment all of this out. So the next library we're going to be looking at is the random library. And so in this library, I am going to show you how you can generate a random number. And if you remember our helpful string formatting, we can just now put in 
rand random of course random dot random this is saying from the random library take the random function and then we pass in two parameters or like two numbers and these numbers are the lower bound and the upper bound of the random number you want to generate i want to generate a random number from one to ten and so now if you run this program of a couple of times as you can see we are generating random numbers every time this program is run now there's a whole science to how this function actually works i want to get into that all you need to know is that this could generate a number from one to ten and it's very helpful in other games especially the random number guessing game that you will be creating soon um the next library i want to show you is a string library and with this i actually think i can also show you the random dot choice because that is very helpful but yeah let's take a look at this string library right now okay so remember that we imported string and now we can actually print out string dot ascii lowercase now why is it ascii underscore lowercase ascii is actually you know a group of values that is kind of standardized in all of like computer language right all of the letters all of the numbers punctuation white space even like remember these spaces are also characters in a string right uh like if you know like if you if you try to add is plus cool you'll get is cool right so you actually need to make sure you have a space here so that you can cat it properly because spaces also matter all of these are within the ascii table if you want to read more about it i recommend you do your own research it's a pretty interesting read there are a lot of cool ascii characters like even the symbols that you know of are ascii characters okay so if you run this um let's actually comment this up and if you run this you'll see that i'll print out all the lowercase numbers you can print out all of the uppercase numbers as well you can print out all of the digits as well Ooh, i think it's actually just digits yeah okay ask you still has digits but probably they just wanted to say string dot digits like that but basically this is pretty cool okay now i told you that i wanted to show you the choice library actually or the choice function the choice function will take a, a string right or any sort of list and we'll talk about lists in the next unit but i just want to give you a precursor it'll take like like let's say we, we print out you know as lowercase right here and we run this as you can see, we have this huge string of 26 characters. What about if we want to randomly choose one of these characters out of the 26 characters we have? We could simply do random.choice. And then the string, right? This, the data type of what I'm highlighting right now is a string, right? And it's going to randomly choose one of these numbers uh, and return that. And the way this works, I'm not going to explain it because you'll need to know about indexing. But if you run this, it will always generate a random lump lowercase letter. And this is very useful in the username password generator that you will be looking at in unit three. Now, we've talked about a lot of things, right? All of this, you know, all of these different libraries. And one thing is in common. You always have to say, from time import ask time from time import sleep from random import choice from random import rendered and that is kind of annoying honestly you can actually get rid of these you can get rid of the random dot random the random dot choice the string dot ascii uh, you can get rid of the all the time dot sleeps but you'll you'll be seeing these red lines right and that's because, of course, this is wrong as it is now. You have to specify from which library you're getting the ask time function. Now, the way to make this work without saying time.sleep or random.random is you have to specify what you are importing. You have to say from random import randint and choice like that, right? You can, you can also specify more than one, right? From time import sleep and ask time and then of course from string I kind of mix up the order here import ascii lowercase 
oh yeah from string right from string import ascii lowercase okay now i don't recommend using this honestly it's fine if you use this but it's just better if you specify which functions you're using but if you're using like 10 or 12 functions from a huge library you can also say from random import star which will import every single function from the library okay but i do recommend you specify specifically what you want to use that was a lot of information we will cover all of these in more depth in future units you will be looking at the string and random library pretty soon actually and the time library is something we're not going to really cover as much but it's something that you can use in your future projects thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video i'm in um 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 uh 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 um um uh 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 u